He is known as the Night Fox who can steal anything. Master of reincarnation Jacques Mesrin, director of the NYC ballet company Thomas Leroy, Paul Gaguin, looking for inspiration in Tahiti, and also wayward Julius Caesar who is opposed by Asterix and Obelix. Vincent Castle is a French actor who won the heart of beautiful Monica Bellucci, a public favorite and a lover. Today, we will tell you everything you've wanted to know about this movie star. What did Vincent try to prove to himself by becoming an actor? How did living in Brazil help him on the set of Ocean's 12? Why did the actor almost beat up Gerard Depardieu? And why did he break up with his wives? This is Biographer, a channel that lifts the veil of the lives of world-famous stars. Well, get comfortable, because we're starting. Vincent Crochon, which is the real name of our today's star, was born in Paris on November 23, 1966, in the family of actor Jean-Pierre Castle and journalist Sabine Letic. Besides Vincent, there were two more children in the family, brother Matthias, who is a rapper in the band Assassin, and half-sister Cecile, who is also an actress and a singer under the pseudonym Holly Sizz. My father is a Protestant, the actor said. My mother has always been torn between her parents, a Jewish father and an extremely religious Christian mother. My grandmother is from Corsica. They have it there in the mountains. Everything is very traditional. Women wear only black. And I grew up in Paris, which was becoming a Muslim city before my eyes, and learned to look at any religion as a useful metaphor for understanding something about human nature. However, I was never a believer. Maybe it's also the fact that I was sent to a Catholic school with very strict rules, which is the best way to cure my interest in religion. In his youth, Vincent's father was known as an actor of episodic roles, but shortly after his son's birth, his career took off. He became famous thanks to his roles in the comedies of Felipe de Broca, and in 1972 he received real recognition thanks to his role in the movie The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie by Louise Buñuel. For a long time, it seemed to Vincent that everyone saw him as the son of a celebrity. As a child, they always said the same thing about me. This is the son of that actor. How can you find yourself, your personality, in such a situation? And this provoked a protest in me, he recalled. Therefore, he tried his best to escape as far as possible from the image that his father embodied on the screen, and he avoided working with people of his generation hating new wave figures. Believe me, being the son of an actor is very difficult. Not only that, the father was never at home. The fact is that such people, and I am one of them, are extremely focused on themselves and their inner world. I was lucky. I had a good father, and his eccentricity did not harm anyone. Jean-Pierre gave his son a lot of useful advice. He said that it was very important to be able to be calm, restrained. I must honestly admit that I learned a lot by watching my father, the actor said. Probably it'll sound cruel, but I believe that the younger generation should learn from the mistakes of the elders. Times change, but there are still things I can't do that I think he could do. Vincent studied at Maitrise, a boarding school in Montmartre, then at the École des Roches in vernay sur havre and at the Valbum International Center. Besides, he took vocal lessons from operetta singer Suzanne Serrano and graduated from the Annie Fratellini Circus School. However, his only passion in adolescence was theater. Vincent acted in school amateur productions, attended acting classes, and improved his acting skills by watching the films of his favorite director, Martin Scorsese. To some extent, it was the movies of the titular classic of cinema that pushed the boy to the acting path. I guess I became an actor because my father was an actor, you know, and I, and I really grew up w watching him on sets, on, on stage, and, um, you know, he, he had so much fun with what, he, with what he was doing, so that, you know, for me it was totally natural to become one. Someday, he would tell how thin he was as a child and how he was ashamed of it, and tried to become manly and brutal as soon as possible, and also got interested in hip-hop, which according to him, had a great influence on him. When I was 17, I would wear these big baggy 1940s-style suits with the latest Pumas trainer with fat laces. That was my vibe. Vincent tried his best to oppose himself to the family, to prove his worth. Already in his teenage years, his rebellious spirit began to manifest itself, which greatly upset his parents. Most of all in the world, he loved the suburbs of Paris. At the age of 15, Vincent already had his own company, which could well be included in the street gangs of Paris. When the boy turned 20, he was unobtrusively advised to go to New York and try his luck there. Vincent Crocan began his professional acting career in the States, having previously listened to his father's persuasion and taken the family pseudonym Castle.
The debut on the New York stages was not very successful. Mostly the guy faked a living statue on the streets. All that made up his life was alcohol, parties, a series of short frivolous relationships, constant fights, and calls to the police. When I first started acting, I was sure that I had nothing to say to the French audience. I belonged to the generation that grew up on hip-hop and Nike, and I had nothing else on my mind. Of course, in my youth, I dreamed of Hollywood. I wanted to play with Marlon Brando. But living in the States, I understood more and more clearly that I am a real Frenchman. That is why Vincent returned to his homeland. There, he turned to his father's friend, the outstanding actor and theater director Jean-Louis Barat, the founder of the Théâtre de Rosset. This theater was later renamed the Théâtre du Rond Point and was famous for its very original interpretations of the work of Nietzsche and Voltaire. Baralt did not refuse the talented young man, and for some time Vincent became a permanent member of the theater troupe. Vincent Castle's first film work was the comedy Storks Do As They Please, which was released in 1989. The role was tiny, as in the next comedy, The Keys to Paradise, then there was the role of the young Dee Dee from Josie Dion's film Hot Chocolate, as well as the photographer from the romantic comedy The Underside of Passion. In the 1990s, Vincent and his friends made several films about their lives, no illusions and no decorations, and they suddenly understood what French cinema could become. Castle believed that in this way they made their contribution to French cinema. It seems to me that not one of my friends could become the new Aronofsky, Boyle, or Cronenberg. I understand that when these big directors call me now and invite me to act, it is largely thanks to the films I participated in then. By 1995, he already had about 15 movies. However, Castle was remembered by the French public not because of his film career, but because of his violent nature. The young actor did not get out of the police station and was always drunk. He was known as an aggressive and almost uncontrollable young man who was capable of doing something illegal at any moment. A drop of alcohol in his blood instantly awakened rage and anger in him. He began always looking for someone who could be a potential victim of his accumulated anger. He learned to control himself sober, but not for long. Almost all the time between filming, the actor spent on alcohol raids in Paris or any other city in which he happened to be. His relationships with women were also very specific. He changed them like gloves and was rude to them. In the presence of journalists at parties, he could afford to insult his girlfriend and she still obediently went to his house. All of them dreamed of marrying him, taming him, and making him an exemplary family man. This annoyed Vincent very much, but he was not going to change. Instead, the actor was waiting for his breakthrough role. In 1995, he took part in the French-American film Jefferson in Paris with the participation of Seth Gilliam and Gwyneth Paltrow. This historical drama, directed by James Ivory, is a semi-fictional story of Thomas Jefferson's tenure as United States Ambassador to France before his presidency and his relationship with the Italian-English artist Maria Cosway and his enslaved maid, Sally Hemings. However, the role of the revolutionary Camille Desmoulins did not become a landmark in the actor's career. The movie received negative reviews from critics and failed at the box office. A truly breakthrough role awaited the actor in the same year when he was lucky enough to meet director Matthew Kasovitz. He approved the young actor for the main role in the drama about class and racial prejudices, hate. This black and white film tells the story of a day and night in the lives of three friends from a poor immigrant neighborhood in the suburbs of Paris. Vincent played a Jewish boy named Vince who accidentally finds a gun and now seeks revenge for the death of a friend. It was black and white, it was about the suburbs, it was something not against the government but, you know, it was questioning the police system, you know. Um, the heroes were like you know, three young kids that nobody knew really, and uh, a black, an Arab, and a Jew. You know, in a strange way, when we went to Cannes and we had the prize and everything, I felt something was wrong. Because, you know, we were talking about kids being shot by cops, you know. And here we were at the Cannes Film Festival drinking champagne. For his role, Castle was nominated for two Caesar Awards as Best Actor and Most Promising Actor. Already in this period, Vincent was seen as a straightforward, unpredictable, and ready-for-any-experiments actor. In 1996, the film The Pupil was released, where Castle plays a completely new role for himself, the young writer Julian, who gets a job as a tutor at the aristocratic house of Lyle. 
His student is a very smart but sick boy. Je vais essayer de jouer le rôle de l'école et vous, vous tâcherez d'être à vous seul un troupeau de 500 petits ânes en train de brouter. J'espère seulement que vous n'allez pas nous faire brer tous ensemble. Vous n'auriez pas le dessus. Morgan surprises the mentor with his high intelligence and unusual hobby, baking cakes in the form of castles. Critics gave mixed reviews of Vincent's performance, but the film received positive reviews. The following year, Castle was offered the lead role in Giles Mamouni's first feature film, Melodrama The Apartment. Monica Bellucci, a then little-known actress, became his partner on the set. By the way, the video about her is already on our channel. Follow the link and learn more about this Italian movie star. The first shooting day did not go well from the beginning. The woman was late and flying into the pavilion, knocked Vincent off his feet. The man reacted sharply to the beauty, saying that she was another model who imagined herself to be an actress. She, in her turn, called Castle a rude person. Thus began the enmity of the two main actors in real life. Their hatred grew stronger every day. According to Monica, she considered her co-star too arrogant, and Vincent, in turn, angrily asked the director if it was not possible to choose a French actress for the role instead of an Italian underwear model. Offset, they tried their best to avoid each other. Giles Mimouni was impressed by the way they argued and shouted at each other. He expected anything, but not this. After all, Vincent was famous for never missing a single skirt, and Monica was still a model with a stunning appearance. However, the touching love story of the young entrepreneur Max and the mysterious Lisa gradually began to bring the actors closer together. Once after one of the hard shooting days, Vincent went on his usual tour of nightclubs. At the entrance to one of the clubs, his gaze was captivated by the back of a gorgeous brunette. The actor immediately rushed to get acquainted and stopped, stunned. In front of him was the hated model Monica Bellucci. After that, the ice between the actors was broken. Soon everyone began to notice changes in their relationship. Vincent continued to get on Monica's nerves, but at the same time he appeared every morning with two cups of coffee, one of which he handed to Monica. Every day he was becoming more and more attached to the woman, and she gradually changed her anger to mercy. When Monica started playing her part, everyone fell silent. I myself seemed to have plunged into the dark, warm water from which I did not want to get out. And I remembered the legends about medieval witches who bewitched men with one look, one smile, one hip movement. And the man died forever. Then I realized that I was gone. The film was a critical success, winning the BAFTA Award for Best Film Not in the English Language and the first British Independent Film Award for Best International Independent Film. The movie also received two Caesar Awards for Best Director and Most Promising Actress. Castle and Bellucci appeared together at the awards ceremony. The couple started dating. The relationship with Monica seemed to have completely changed the actor. The most surprising thing was that she behaved as the complete opposite of all the girls he had known before. Usually, after a week of seeing each other, they moved in without Vincent noticing, but it took a lot of effort to get them to leave. Monica behaved as if she was ashamed of him. She tried not to stay in the apartment for a long time, did not leave anything behind except a barely perceptible scent of perfume, did not want to go to events with him. In the end, he could not stand it and offered to move in, but she refused, although Monica was not against acting in the same films. In 1997, the movie Doberman was released. The main role of a brazen bandit nicknamed Doberman went to Castle. The character was written specifically for Vincent, who was then called the most aggressive French actor. The favorite young woman of the main character was played by Monica Bellucci. The actor agreed to the main role only on the condition that his partner on the set would be his lover. The director was against such a choice because of the woman's strong Italian accent, but Castle found a way out of the situation by presenting the idea of making her character deaf and mute. Vincent was not at all going to give up joint roles with his beloved, so he agreed to star in Carmine Amoroso's provocative melodrama, As You Want Me.
The picture was a joint Italian-French project, and filming took place on the outskirts of Rome. The funny film where the main character, Pasquale, played by Castle, makes a difficult choice between the hysterical beauty, Bellucci, and a transgender friend with a fragile female soul, artistically played by Enrico Loverso, did not leave the audience indifferent. The picture received high praise from critics and once again showed the versatility of Castle's acting. Journalists were amazed at how Vincent had changed. He was known as an aggressive and almost uncontrollable man who was capable of anything at any moment. Thanks to Monica, he became calmer and stopped drinking. However, one thing remained unchanged. The actor at any moment was ready to rush into a fight and kill anyone who insulted his beloved or at least looked at her the wrong way. Her best asset of actress and woman, too, is not her beauty, but her intelligence. Her intelligence of people and of things. She is very perspicacious, very attentive with the others, and has a great quality to put them at ease. In 1997, Vincent first tried himself as a director and screenwriter in the film Shabbat Night Forever. And later that year, the actor dared to show Monica his dream city, which for him was the gigantic Rio de Janeiro. He first came there in 1993 and instantly fell in love with noisy and controversial Rio. Since then, he sometimes visited it between shootings, and so, finally, he brought his beloved there. Upon arrival, the actor immediately took Bellucci to introduce her to the monuments of architecture and art. Twelve hours of such a walking tour of Rio left Monica with conflicting feelings, and Vincent was inspired to continue working with her on the same set. Vincent tried his best to find joint projects with Monica. In 1998, the controversial film Pleasure and Its Little Inconveniences was released, where Castle played a serial killer who was in love with his next victim. And Monica appeared as a crying young woman. The film consists of separate episodes, each with its own plot and characters, but the story is not hermetic. Each episode smoothly flows into another. The characters can encounter each other, being minor characters in another story after completing their own. The movie, despite a good cast and a live performance, was not liked by the public. At the end of 1997, Vincent was offered a role in the high-budget British historical film Elizabeth. The opportunity to play Kate Blanchett and Geoffrey Rush was great, so Vincent signed the contract. The role of the Duke of Anjou seemed interesting and bright. <laughs> Most of the film was shot in New Zealand, some scenes in England, and this meant not seeing his girlfriend for a couple of months. The man asked Bellucci several times to become his wife, but the wayward beauty constantly refused. When Vincent finished his work at the set of Elizabeth, he decided to remember the past and got drunk. His relationship with Monica taught him to hold back because any harsh word towards her meant one thing. She immediately turned around and left. Whether she would return or not, Vincent had no idea. I just have a vital need to let off steam every now and then. Well, when I play some villains, it allows me to relieve stress on the set. Sometimes you have to let your demons out. That night, he drank even more than he intended, and what difference did it make if Monica wouldn't be around anyway? Sunk in his thoughts, Vincent did not notice how he drove into the oncoming lane. He regained consciousness in the hospital. Monica was sitting by his bed with a mournful expression on her face. It was there when she agreed to marry the poor man. Journalists were already waiting for the couple at the entrance to the hospital. Somehow, rumors about the actor's upcoming wedding had already spread, and the journalists wanted the details firsthand. To their question, the actress answered ironically, I thought that being a widow was more prestigious than being a former lover. Having uttered this phrase, Monica, with an impregnable look, got into the car. Vincent, on the other hand, lingered a bit and told the journalists three more words. I am happy. Do you think Bellucci did the right thing by accepting his proposal? Write in the comments. It's interesting to hear your opinion. Their wedding took place in the summer of 1999 in Monaco. The couple decided not to contact wedding agencies, which they soon regretted. It seemed to them that the avalanche of unresolved questions about the ceremony's organization would simply crush their family happiness, even before the exchange of wedding rings. 
All this simply enraged Vincent, who, although he had thought through everything to the smallest detail, did not take into account that in life, everything does not always go according to plan. He made at least three shopkeepers and one waiter cry that day. What did I feel on the wedding day? I was very angry because we didn't have enough time for anything and I had to run around like a freak doing all sorts of things. It was really up to the two of us. Also, I was wearing shorts. All of that would take too much time, so we said, Okay, let's get married first and then invite the guests. That's what they did. They arranged a ceremony and only then invited guests. However, journalists, as always, had known about everything in advance, so they were waiting for the couple the very morning without any invitation. The day for the lovers turned out to be both the happiest and the most stressful in their family life. However, the newlyweds did not even think of stopping their film career for the sake of solitude. They continued filming. Vincent's next role was Gilles Garret, the leader of the French army and associate of the Maid of Orleans, whom he played in Luc Besson's film The Messenger, The Story of Joan of Arc. It's interesting that Castle's character was a real person. After the war and Joan's death, he returned to his lands, and a year later he was arrested on charges of murdering more than a hundred young boys and executed. Some historians believe that his crimes became the basis for the French tale Bluebeard, about a man who killed his wives and buried their bodies in his huge house. But where, where's Dunois? And, and where are the men that you promised me? You never send them! However, despite its star cast, the film received mixed reviews and underperformed at the box office, grossing just under $67 million on a $60 million budget. And in the same year, Vincent appeared in the British black comedy Guest House Paradiso, created by the comedy duo Rick Mayall and Adrian Edmondson, for whom it was also the directorial debut. The movie tells about the crazy adventures of the guests and staff of one of the worst guest houses in Britain. Vincent played one of the hotel guests, Gino Giuseppe Bolognese, a pagan looking for his bride, an Italian actress. These two characters, in some ways, really resembled a star couple. Simultaneously with working together with his wife, he tried to create his own family nest, as far as their career allowed. Monica and Vincent had nothing in common, but they were not looking for it, and they didn't spend time together at all. The only thing that united them was work and love. Love catches you by surprise. Two people seem to fall into a trap. At the same time, you have nothing in common. You have nothing to offer each other. At first, you panic. You don't know what to do, but you reach out, touch his soul, and you don't care anymore. In the fall of 1999, another film with the participation of Castle and Bellucci premiered in France. The French audience liked the action movie Unruly, but it wasn't a success at the global box office. Vincent and Monica found the story of rebellious Pete, who returned from prison and had to sort out the wreckage of his own life, interesting. However, the relationship between the actors on the set was not easy. Vincent did everything to play in the same films as Monica, but he physically could not see someone hugging his wife, even if it was just on set. Later, the actor admitted that he really liked playing a couple in love with Monica, not only because it made me spend more time with her than without her, but also because it was easier than with a stranger. There is a closeness that is created between those who love each other, which is difficult to achieve otherwise. At the end of the same year, the actor began working on the action movie Crimson Rivers. Jean Reno acted as his partner on the film. Okay, alors on me mon sang. Bouge pas. Dans l'état d'arrestation, je suis un cop. French movie stars have turned into police officers, investigating two, at first glance, completely unrelated cases. The rule of the young detective Max Kerkerian brought Vincent Castle a nomination for the European Film Academy Award and made him one of the most famous figures of French cinema, and the film became one of the highest grossing action movies of the year. Without betraying himself, the actor again decided to star in the same project with his wife, so he advised Monica for the role of Sylvia in the 2001 French horror film Brotherhood of the Wolf, where he was approved for the role of the avid hunter and traveler Jean-Francois de Morangia. The plot was based on a real series of murders that took place in France in the famous legend of the Beast of Gévaudan. The special effects for the creature were a combination of computer-generated imagery, puppetry, and animatronics developed at Jim Henson's Creature Shop. Parts of the film were shot at Roquetéat Castle. Zach, n'êtes-vous pas heureux de pouvoir quitter notre beau pays entier? Savez-vous qu'en d'autres temps, mes gens vous auraient rossé pour l'avoir seulement regardé? In 
The film received generally positive reviews from critics for its special effects, cinematography, performance, and atmospheric direction by Christoph Gantz. With a budget of $29 million, it was a commercial success, grossing over $70 million worldwide. The film also became the sixth highest grossing French language film of all time in the United States and one of the most successful French language films worldwide. Being at the peak of popularity, Vincent Castle made a new attempt to conquer Hollywood. In 2001, the first English film with his participation was released. It was the crime drama Birthday Girl. He and Matthew Kasowitz, who also participated in the shooting, had to turn into Russian gangsters who came to the birthday of their sister, played by Nicole Kidman. The actor says that three factors are most important when selecting a script. Uh, it has to do with the director more than anything else, and it needs, it needs to have personality and originality for me. Between filming and his own movies, Vincent did not forget to find time for his wife. Of course, he was still jealous, though he tried to hide it as much as possible, because his Italian beauty had such partners on the set as Keanu Reeves, Bruce Willis, and George Clooney. However, sometimes his jealousy became a reason for unpleasant incidents. So, during the filming of Asterix and Obelix, Mission Cleopatra, where Monica got the role of Cleopatra, there was a real scandal. The fact is that Gerard Depardieu, who played Obelix in the movie, often allowed himself to flirt with a beautiful colleague, and Castle witnessed one of these humorous flirtations. He took the whole situation too seriously, started screaming, and almost destroyed all the decorations. In the evening of the same day, however, Vincent apologized for his behavior. Generally, I'm jealous. My ancestors on my mother's side are from Corsica, and from them I inherited my crazy temper, but I prefer not to be tormented by suspicions. I love Monica, and I am happy that I live with a person who, like me, values freedom the most. In 2002, the film Irreversible was released with the participation of a star couple, which managed to captivate the eyes of 600,000 viewers in France alone. Obsessed with revenge, Vincent's character tried to find and punish those responsible for the sexual assault on his girlfriend. Admittedly, it was one of the most violent and scandalous films of the century. However, the script did not seem so scary to the actors at first. The filming of the episodes was conducted in a chaotic manner, and Vincent and Monica really enjoyed their work in the first weeks of filming. However, the more they got involved in the process, the more difficult thoughts it caused. They prepared in advance for the scene in which the most terrible thing happened. First of all, it was necessary to come up with a decent excuse to send Vincent on a business trip. He did not want to go, but no one wanted to tell him directly that his presence on the set was, to put it mildly, undesirable. In the end, they managed to send him away. At that time, he simultaneously starred in the British-Spanish mystical drama The Reckoning. Filming took place in Spain, Wales, and England, and therefore the actor could not be constantly on the set with his wife. During the editing of Irreversible, Vincent decided to visit the director and watch the footage. He had already seen part of it, but the overall picture of the film did not add up. Gaspard No removed all the moments that posed any danger and let the actor watch. The unedited material did not impress me. I generally had a hard time catching the thread of the plot. I was very requested that no one get hurt during the viewing. I kept my promise. Everyone remained unharmed. On May 22, 2002, the film was shown to the public as part of the competition program of the Cannes Film Festival. 250 people left the room. 10 people needed medical assistance. The remaining audience gave a standing ovation. In the middle of the display, Vincent Castle suddenly ran out of the hall. Monica followed him. Vincent's face showed panic, horror, disgust, and complete helplessness at the same time. Tears of anger literally covered his eyes. His wife even had to calm the actor, who did not stop crying. Vincent was greatly influenced by this film. He always tried to protect Monica. To be there, the sight of a crime being committed on the screen for nine minutes, in which the victim was his wife, literally undermined consciousness. Instincts prompted him to immediately kill the person who did it, but Castle still understood that the actor who played the criminal was just doing his job. After the premiere, Vincent demanded his wife to consult with him when choosing roles. From now on, Monica had to coordinate every step with him. Of course, the independent and proud Italian woman did not tolerate such an attitude and went to Monaco, leaving Vincent in France. In the six months since Irreversible was released, they have only seen each other a few times. The meetings always ended in scandals. The actor decided that everything was over between them and lost it. He stopped acting and drank a lot, and then he left for Rio de Janeiro. He had long waited to see his beloved city again, but he could not even imagine that he would want to stay there forever. He was seen with one young woman, then with another, 
He answered journalists' questions as follows. We have a free relationship with Monica. We try not to limit each other's freedom. The beloved city became a quiet haven for the actor, where he could afford to be himself. There, he fell in love with capoeira, beaches, and football. He started practicing the martial art, which resembled a dance, to keep in shape. But soon, capoeira became Castle's favorite hobby. It helped him relax and focus at the same time. Work in Frederick Schoendorfer's film Secret Agents was the actor's first after an almost two-year break. On continue, comme si de rien n'était. C'est après ça, ouais. Et toi, ça ne te gêne pas. Vincent and Monica signed up to participate in this film a year before shooting. It had promised to be a great adventure then, but now they were barely talking to each other. None of the spouses could imagine how to work together in this situation. Bellucci was persuaded at the studio not to break the contract. However, despite all the family troubles, a spark flashed between the couple on the set. Their characters were connected by romantic relationships, which somehow passed on to the actors. The couple reconciled. Newspapers wrote about their divorce so often that no one believed in a happy ending. Despite all the gossip, Monica and Vincent were together again. Moreover, after the end of filming, the husband suddenly offered his wife to have a child. Despite the positive changes in the main characters of the film in real life, secret agents did not cause special emotions in the audience. Another attempt to make an action film worthy of Hollywood failed. The movie was frankly not up to the level of skill of American filmmakers, but it had nothing to do with European cinema either. After filming Agents, Vincent sat down to analyze the scripts with new inspiration. I don't like all this commotion on the set. That's why I always refuse first and then, when it becomes simply indecent to refuse, I have to agree. Castle starred in the adventure film Blueberry, playing another adventurer there. After finishing work on the film, he was offered to participate in the Ocean's 12 project. This time, the team of inventive robbers was joined by Francois Tolure, nicknamed the Night Fox, Vincent's character, who won the hearts of millions with a masterful performance of Capoeira under the laser light. The storyline, developed by screenwriter George Nolfi, was actually intended for one of John Woo's films. After the decision was made to create a sequel, the Warner Brothers producers asked George to rewrite the script for the Ocean's Eleven's characters. Some scenes, which were supposed to be filmed in Amsterdam, were actually filmed in Harlem, 12.5 miles from it to be exact. And in Sicily, all the local security was on alert, as members of the Sicilian Mafia group were spotted near the filming location. During the shooting in Rome, a rather curious incident happened. Brad Pitt and George Clooney could not enter the hotel because the porter was sure that they were simple vagabonds. The actors got caught in the rain and did not look like themselves. The A-list stars stuck around until they met Castle. After learning about what had happened, he laughed for a long time, and then told the porter that he was familiar with these marginals. And he joked that he would have also taken them to an overnight stay, but for some reason they were paid for rooms in this particular hotel. Despite the wild success of the first part of the franchise, Ocean's 12 received mixed reviews. The film was criticized for a slow start a convoluted plot, and a final twist that negates much of the previous action. And in Entertainment Weekly, it was included in the list of the 25 worst sequels ever made. Even despite the heavy workload, Monica and Vincent met more often than usual. They came to each other's shooting sets, found a few days for a joint weekend in Europe, and seemed happy. Vincent accompanied Monica to all the events, and every time he gave the journalist such a look as if he was ready to kill anyone if they dared to insult his wife. The couple spent most of their time in Italy. On one of these weekends, the actress informed her husband that she was pregnant. I was happier than ever. Monica's the best thing that happened in my life. I think I did the right thing by deciding to wait for her. On September 12, 2004, Monica gave birth to a girl, Deva, whom they decided to name in honor of the Vedic mother goddess. Yes, a couple of individuals who loved each other very much became not just two actors with their own plans and ambitions, but first of all, a mother and a father. Castle said, with Deva's birth, Monica and I began to adapt to the rhythm of our daughter's life, and not to the schedule of filming as before. If a girl is teething, all of this cannot be canceled just because her star dad or mom needs to see an agent or do a dozen interviews. No one believed that Vincent would turn out to be a good father. On the contrary, the actor never left Monica alone with the child. He was always planning something, running somewhere. So it's not surprising that in 2005, only one film with his participation was released. It was an American thriller by the Swedish director Mikhail Hofström, derailed, based on the novel by James Siegel. 
In the film, Castle's character, the violent criminal Philip LaRoche, blackmails a couple of married lovers played by Clive Owen and Jennifer Aniston. The film was released about two months after the September 17, 2005 train disaster when a Metra commuter train derailed. There is no disaster in the movie, but Metra has gone out of its way to change the title of the movie. Despite the famous cast, the film received mostly negative reviews, but Castle was not particularly worried about the result of his work because he was once again waiting for a joint project with Monica. Vincent and I never discuss each other's work because we belong to different worlds. He doesn't know my friends. I don't know his friends. Of course, sometimes we leave our shells and start doing something together, but we still remain beings from two different planets, independent and charismatic. I think this is the only way for two creative people to maintain a relationship. In 2006, Castle and Bellucci starred together again. Vincent played the main role in the thriller Shaitan by the French director Kim Chaperon. Monica also appeared in the film in a cameo role, thanks to which they could spend a few extra days together. In this film, we laugh at what is scary, said Vincent. And indeed, at first glance, a primitive horror film, like a cliched American one where a group of teenagers goes to a dangerous place only to die at the hands of some madman, turns into something more. In Shaitan, the director's not entirely serious. Ironic attitude towards what they do is clearly visible. The critics' opinion about the picture were divided. Some saw it as propaganda for violence, while others called the film some kind of demented and utterly disreputable masterpiece, the scariest, most uninhibited movie of the year, and also perhaps the funniest. After filming Shaitan, Vincent persuaded his wife to go to Rio with him. The actress could not understand her husband's love for one of the most criminal cities in the world, but for him, it was a quiet haven. After spending a couple of weeks in sunny and passionate Rio, Castle returned to filming. He appeared in a new part of the criminal adventures of Danny Ocean and his team of the most talented crooks in Las Vegas called Ocean's 13. This time, both viewers and critics more positively appreciated Soderbergh's another attempt to continue a successful franchise. In the same year, Castle again tried on the image of a gangster in the drama Eastern Promises, playing the spoiled son of a Russian mobster, the master of the cold-blooded killer Nikolai, the character of Viggo Mortensen. Still, Vincent tried to spend as much time as possible with his wife and daughter. On this occasion, he bought a house near Copacabana Beach in Rio and began bringing his family there. The following year, Castle went to the filming of Jean-Francois Richet's film Mezrin Public Enemy No. 1, dedicated to the life of the last French gangster Jacques Mezrin, known for amazing transformations using plastic surgery, makeup, and real stagecraft. For this role, the actor specifically gained and then lost 40 pounds, which, according to him, was very difficult. Filming was in all the countries through which the path of the legendary criminal passed – Canada, the United States, and Spain. For Vincent, this work was very important. All his life, he tried to surpass his father's fame. Despite the fact that he had long since become a real star and his father had never reached this rank, Vincent had not yet proved it to himself. More importantly, he did not convince his father of it. The news of his father's death caught Vincent in Spain. Jean-Pierre Cassel never saw the main triumph of his son. The last role of the actor was the role of Panoramix in the family film Asterix at the Olympic Games, which premiered already after Jean-Pierre's death. When we lose our parents, we unconsciously allow them to continue living inside of us. My father died during the filming of Misery. I may have put on weight and worn a wig, but I've never looked like him more than I do in this movie. For the role of Jacques Mazarin, Castle received the César, the main cinematographic award of France. Filming of the second part of the film, Mazarin Part 2, Public Enemy No. 1, was supposed to start in a month. Vincent suddenly felt endlessly tired. He couldn't wait for Jacques Mazarin to be shot as soon as possible in the center of Paris, to end this story and retire with his family in the best city on the planet, in the city made for him, in Rio. No, the hardest thing is to learn how to trust yourself and how to... Um to understand how you function. But the actor did not stop filming there either. His next project was the Brazilian drama Adrift. There, Vincent appeared as French writer Matthias, who came with his wife and three children for the summer to a fabulous place on the ocean coast where he was engaged in literary work and led a double life, having a young mistress who lived next door to them. 
The beautiful drama filmed in a picturesque place in Brazil, and the main actor's performance was liked by the audience at the Cannes Film Festival in 2009, where it was presented in the Uncertain Regard section. The following year, Vincent became a producer and played one of the main roles in the French drama Our Day Will Come. The film received mostly negative reviews and did not find success with the audience. In 2010, the actor was included in the cast of the drama Black Swan. Initially, it was supposed that the action would take place in France, but it would be filming in Budapest. But this idea had to be abandoned due to budgetary constraints. The first version of the script was called The Understudy, and the story revolved around a New York theater. Director Darren Aronofsky liked the script and offered to transfer the action to the world of ballet. Vincent compared his character, the director of the NYC Ballet Company, to George Balanchine, one of the founding fathers of the New York City Ballet. The story about the behind-the-scenes of the ballet, a talented but restrained ballerina who gradually loses the line between reality and hallucinations, brought the main star, Natalie Portman, an Oscar, and Mila Kunis, the Mastriani Award. Castle was left without awards, but critics all agreed that he coped incredibly convincingly with the rather formulaic role of the main choreographer. We all know the story. Virginal girl, pure and sweet, trapped in the body of a swan. She desires freedom, but only true love can break the spell. The couple spent, at best, a couple of days a month together, but these meetings were filled with such passion and tenderness that it would have been enough for more than a hundred married couples. Soon they learned that they would become parents again. On May 20, 2010, the second daughter of Castle and Bellucci, Leone, was born. Still, there were rumors that Monica decided to give birth to a second child in order to make her husband stay, as he recently stopped paying attention to her. And in the press, there were more and more reports that Vincent was seen in the company of another model-looking beauty. But the couple did not pay attention to some gossip. They were happy again. For several months, the couple decided to lock themselves in their house in Rio and devote their time to the children. They had nowhere to rush. They just wanted to enjoy life. Now we have land in Brazil, Vincent said. For a long time, I could not believe that I have such beauty. I haven't felt a similar feeling since our first meeting with Monica. This land looks so beautiful and flawless that I did not cut down a single palm tree. Now my family and I live in Rio. I don't know what exactly attracts me there. Maybe the sun, maybe the beach, or maybe the fact that Brazil is very different from the countries I've been to. There I had the feeling that nothing is impossible. I feel at ease there. Since we moved, I feel much better and freer. Don't get me wrong, I still love Europe. The gigantic and cruel metropolis of Rio de Janeiro appealed to Vincent with its infinite freedom. It was unlike any city in the world that the actor had ever seen. Everything was there. Wealth existed in close proximity to the poorest neighborhoods. Sun-drenched beaches were a few minutes from the stone jungle. You ask, what is happiness for me? Look, it's 7 p.m., Copacabana. I'm sitting and slowly drinking a beer, watching people pass by. Beautiful. I'm happy. Rio is a city of streets, almost like London. Only in London, it is so cold that it is impossible to stay outside for a long time. Vincent stopped chasing success. After his father's death, he reluctantly starred in two films a year. You know, I don't want to set any specific goals for myself anymore. He admitted, I just want to breathe freely and easily. I like this more than constantly rushing somewhere and thinking about doing something like that again in this life. Do you understand what I mean? I shoot in one or two projects a year, no more. I definitely love this process. It has been a part of my life for a long time now. Not exceeding his limit of two films a year, in 2011, the actor starred in the historical drama A Dangerous Method, where his partners on the set were Kira Knightley, Viggo Mortensen, and Michael Fassbender. The plot revolves around the founders of psychoanalysis Carl Gustav Jung and Sigmund Freud, and their complex relationship with the intelligent and beautiful patient Sabina. Vincent got the role of Otto Gross, a brilliant, licentious, and unstable psychoanalyst, and at the same time, Jung's patient. What does any normal old patriarch want in the twilight of his life? Grandchildren, grandsons, am I right? Over the years dedicated to his career, Kessel found his own way to step out of the role and return to himself, and it was quite unusual. Normally, when I finish a movie, I will shave my head, go on vacation, and I won't shoot until it grows back again. It gets me out of the previous character, mentally and physically. It allows me to feel free, he says. 
Filming took place in Constanz, Lucerne, Zurich, and in the park of the Belvedere Palace in Vienna. So the actor had, again, to leave his family for a while. The relationship between Vincent and Monica gradually became more strained. Being alone in Rio, the actor did not worry about marital fidelity. That was repeatedly reported by the paparazzi. He was photographed walking along the beach with one young woman, then with another. He no longer tried to keep his unruly, beautiful wife close to him. On the contrary, he mentioned that he and Monica had a free relationship and a guest marriage. Sometime in 2012, the first photo reports of the ubiquitous paparazzi about Vincent's adventures appeared in magazines. However, changes in his behavior began earlier. The death of his father really crippled the actor. He seemed to have lost his purpose in life, because now he had no one to prove anything to. Monica could not tolerate this attitude, and in an interview began to speak about her husband in a negative way. Vincent is a very nervous actor, even hysterical. He always doesn't like something. He likes to plan, and when all the plans fail, he starts to get angry and scream. Monica and Vincent met less and less. The children, whom Vincent continued to care for, served as an excuse for meetings. With the new tax law, which was disastrous for all the rich people of France, many stars hurried to leave their native country. Castle and Bellucci were no exception. The actor admitted that he generally tried to avoid political issues. I'm not trying to participate in projects that are political or social at all, he says. I've been involved with stuff because they were interesting projects when I came across them, but I'm not trying to be social or political. Despite the deterioration of family relations, the man did not want to give up 17 years of marriage, so he persuaded Monica to move to Rio and try to start from scratch. She agreed, and in February 2013, they came to Brazil together. At first, everything was fine. Monica and Vincent talked about their love for this country with sincere joy. There is a telephone, the internet, everything is there. For us, travel is a lifestyle. Then either you get too old to travel the world, or the kids grow up and they don't want to travel anymore because they have friends here, a home. So as long as we can afford it, we travel. At the same time, Vincent starred in Danny Boyle's psychological thriller Trance with James McAvoy and Rosario Dawson. There he played the leader of robbers who tried to find out from an accomplice with the help of a hypnotist where the valuable stolen panning by Francisco Goya was hidden. One of the quality of the movie, I think, is that the female character is really strong, and that's rare. Mm. As an actress, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, really, for, 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 for once, you know, you, you, you have a really uh, strong femin, feminine uh, character, mm. you know? I mean, women rule the world, <laughs> as we know. I mean, in that movie, that's definitely the case, and I think it's very refreshing to see that. Michael Fassbender and Colin Firth were considered for the role, which Castle later got. In preparation for filming, all members of the cast took part in a hypnosis session. After shooting in trance, the actor signed a contract for the main role in the fairy tale Beauty and the Beast. There were rumors that Monica Bellucci could also take part in the movie. Filming was not going to start soon, and the couple had several months of rest. Those few months together finally ruined Vincent and Monica's relationship. They literally destroyed each other's personal space. The couple announced their official divorce in August 2013. No one is to blame for the fact that the marriage broke up. My husband and I moved forward, each in one's own direction, each increasingly interested in something of one's own. I always say it takes two to tango. The two of us gave birth to our love, the two of us breathed life into it for many years, and the two of us decided to end it. Besides, Vincent gave me two most beautiful children in the world, and for that alone, I will always love him and be grateful to him. Paying tribute to his beloved city and distracting himself from painful changes in his personal life, Kessel took part in the project Rio, I Love You. The Brazilian anthology film with an ensemble of actors of various nationalities became the fourth in the Cities of Love franchise after the films about Paris, New York, and Tbilisi. Surprisingly, the film received negative reviews. A review by The Hollywood Reporter said, The only people sure to love this concoction are those working for Rio's tourism bureau which may well have picked the camera's vantage points for many lush and lovely overhead shots of the city's distinctive terrain. In 2014, Vincent played the Beast in the adaptation of the legendary fairy tale Beauty and the Beast. His partner was the beautiful Leia Seydoux. 
It is interesting that Vincent Castle had to play twice all the scenes in the form of the Beast. First, he was filmed in a costume, and then they focused on the facial expressions of the actor, and then superimposed them on the head of the Beast, created with the help of computer special effects. Besides, the picture was almost entirely filmed against the background of chroma key. Only a few rooms of the houses in the castle, parts of the ballroom, and street walls of the palace acted as real scenery. Chaque soir, à cette heure précise, tu devras être là. Ne pense même pas à t'échapper. La forêt se refermerait sur toi. The film was screened out of competition at the 64th Berlin International Film Festival and was released in France on February 12, 2014 to generally negative reviews, but was a box office success. It was nominated for the People's Choice Award for Best European Film and received three nominations at the 40th Caesar Awards, winning Best Production Design. And which of the versions of Beauty and the Beast do you like the most? Write in the comments. Let's discuss. Being alone again, Vincent plunged headlong into the filming process. In 2015, as many as six projects with the actor's participation were released. Among them is Ariel Kleiman's movie Partisan. In it, Vincent Castle played the role of Gregory, the despotic father of a family, more like a sect, who raised his children with several wives in isolation from the outside world. Having a powerful charisma and a sick imagination, he installed a misanthropic perception of society in his children and tried to create a small army out of them. Although the movie received mixed reviews from critics, Castle was nominated for an Australian Film Critics Association Award for Best Actor. Castle's next work was the role of King of Strongcliffe in Tale of Tales, Matteo Garone's European fantasy horror film where Vincent's partner on the set was Salma Hayek. It is an adaptation based on a collection of fairy tales by the Italian poet Giambattista Basile, which contained the earliest versions of famous fables such as Rapunzel, Sleeping Beauty, and Cinderella. Three fairy tales from this collection formed the movie's plot. At first, when I got on the set, uh, my first day of shooting, I, I met those two women, and they were already with makeup on, so I didn't know what they looked like in real life. Uh, to work with somebody covered with prosthetics, especially in a, let's say, kind of a sensual kind of scene, it's kind of weird, I have to say. The film competed for the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival and was positively received by the public and critics. In the same year, Castle appeared in three more movies, the short film Violence and Reunion, the comedy One Wild Moment, and the drama My King, for the role in which the actor was nominated for the Caesar Award for the Best Male Role. In the latter, he is in his usual bad boy role, who betrays his beloved and loses her because of his selfish needs. Vincent says that such roles for him are a way to philosophize and show the audience that everything in life is not black and white. Love is not an easy thing. I agreed to play Giorgio because I wanted to say that actually he is not a bad guy. He just has problems. He explained in an interview with Vogue. In the same 2015, it became known about the romance of 52-year-old Vincent Castle with the young model Tina Kuneki. According to Castle, after the divorce with Monica Bellucci, he did not plan any more serious relationships. I was married. I have two little girls. I did what I had to. It was fun, but after a while, I realized that my life was empty. I did not expect to meet someone, but it happened, and this woman is much younger than I would have imagined. Vincent always liked older women. Having played the main role in the film One Wild Moment, where his 45-year-old character had an affair with a 17-year-old girl, he sincerely did not understand how she could interest an adult, experienced man, and believed that teenage stupidity and deliberate vulgarity could not be sexual. And there he met Tina, who had just turned 18. They met in Ibiza, where both spent a short, spontaneous vacation. Tina turned her attention to the grizzled but athletic Vincent as he conquered a wave in the surf. It's funny, but she had no idea who he was. Castle noticed Kaneki that evening in a bar. The girl was laughing charmingly, gathering around her the maximum number of male representatives. I remember seeing only his eyes. He looked at me in a special way, she said later in an interview. Thanks to a mutual friend, they met that same evening, and Tina asked for a surfing lesson. Vincent made an appointment for the next morning, although he was still skeptical of the young girl. They met, surfed, and decided to go for a walk. She loved listening to his stories of life and filming, and he enjoyed her liveliness, energy, and lightheartedness. From that day on, they started seeing each other every day. 
They walked in remote places, away from the paparazzi, although they were still caught. Castle's opinion about young women was gradually changing. He was not annoyed by Kanuki's chatter, her endless selfies for Instagram, her preferences in music and movies, and she completely forgot that next to her is a man who was even older than her father. They were just good together. In the evenings, the actor watched Tina dance in the bar, concentrating on annoying fans around her. He suddenly realized that watching this was unpleasant for him and he did not want to share her with anyone. That's how their romance began, so far at a distance. After the vacation, Castle returned to Brazil and Kuneki returned to her parents in Biarritz. A few months later, Tina insisted on introducing Vincent to her brothers. They were wary at first, but then were just as fascinated by the actor as their sister. Vincent tried to behave romantically and please his beloved one. One day, he arranged a musical concert under her balcony where Mexican musicians played a serenade. A serenade written especially for her by Castle himself. He would say that his friends dissuaded him from this relationship. Having learned about our relationship, just shouted in my ear, Don't do this! The closest friend, who I've had since my youth from the circus school, begged me to think about the male existential crisis that attracts us to girls of the age of our daughters, and choked with statistics. How the relationships of couples with a serious age gap ends. Castle admitted. But the trick is that I don't care how it ends. Now we love each other and want to be together always. How long always will last, no one knows. For me, only this feeling is important. This we are forever. In 2016, the actor starred in the fourth part of the Bourne Tetralogy. In the film, the actor successfully transformed into Asset, a vicious enemy of the main character who craved revenge. You know, each and every Bourne movie has an asset. An asset is the kind of guy you call to resolve like a particular um, situation, you know, in a very uh, radical way, let's say. So I'm one of those assets, you know, in this movie. And... Um, I mean, I, I think the difference on this movie in particular is that there is a backstory to what uh, really is the problem between uh, Jason Bourne and, and my character. Castle's company this time included such recognized Hollywood stars as Matt Damon, Julia Stiles, and Tommy Lee Jones. The film received mixed reviews, but collected $415 million at the global box office. In the same year, he participated in another movie called It's Only the End of the World, directed by Xavier Dolan. The drama revolves around a young playwright who reunites with his family after a 12-year absence to inform them that he is going to die. The film had its world premiere at the 2016 Cannes Film Festival where it completed for the Palme d'Or, and while the film received mixed reviews from critics, it won the Cannes Grand Prix, making Dolan the second Canadian director to win the award. Vincent was nominated for three awards for his portrayal of the main character's brother and won the Canadian Film Award for Best Supporting Actor. In August 2016, Castle and Kuneki disclosed their romance, and in November, they first appeared together at the Victoria's Secret Show in Paris Grand Palais. A star like Vincent Castle could have paved the way for Tina to the best podiums in the world, but it was not necessary. The model only had to appear next to him, and her career went up. She had continuous photo shoots and fashion shows. For some time, the lovers lived in Brazil, not only because the actor adored this country, but also because of his filming in the drama, The Movie of My Life. But in the end, for the sake of his beloved, he agreed to move back to France. She had a job there. It's interesting that at the moment when Castle returned to Paris, his ex-wife left it, explaining that she was tired of the hustle and bustle of the capital. Vincent continued acting. In 2017, the biopic Gagouin Voyage de Tahiti was released, where the actor played the world-famous artist Paul Gagouin. According to the movie plot, Gagouin, tired of Bohemian Paris, goes to another end of the world. In search of inspiration and new colors of life, he ends up in Tahiti. There he meets Tahura, a savage, a goddess, an object of irresistible passion and jealousy, a muse to whom the world owes the existence of the artist's brilliant creations. Film reviews were mixed. Some media criticized the author's approach, particularly regarding the nature of the artist's intimate relationship or the colonial context of the movie. However, Vincent's performance was positively evaluated by the public. In May 2017, the ex-spouses, Castle and Bellucci, appeared on the carpet of the Cannes Festival. Monica was accompanied by actor Giles Lelouch and Vincent shown next to Tina. After a couple of months, however, there was talk of their breakup. The actor was allegedly bored and the model was enamored with someone else. It is difficult to say whether the couple actually had a crisis, but it was definitely the calm before the storm. They welcomed the new year together, and from that moment, everything went fast. 
There was a marriage proposal, and then on August 24th, a magnificent wedding. The marriage was registered at the town hall of the small town of Bedart, in the southwest of France, near Biarritz, where the couple had already bought their own house. This year was extremely busy for Castle. Five films with his participation were released at once. He played the father, the main character, and at the same time a reliable ally of French criminals in the French comedy The World Is Yours by Romain Gavras. Both the film and the actor's performance were quite positively received by the audience and critics. Castle also appeared as experienced police commissioner Francois in the detective thriller Black Tide and played a magician in the Brazilian romantic drama The Great Mystical Circus. Castle's next project was the French historical drama The Emperor of Paris, where he played Eugene Francois Vidoc, the legendary French detective of the 19th century. A clever criminal and a master at escaping from prisons, Vidoc changed cities and professions until he was hired by the Napoleonic government to clean the streets of Paris from crime. Knowing the criminal world from the inside, Vidoc became the most successful detective of his era and the real emperor of Paris. Filming took place at an old air force base near bretigny sur orge and Les Policiers Partés and the Assauri Department, as well as at Château de Vaux de Comte and Fontainebleau. For this movie, Jean-Francois Riquet and Vincent Castle, in collaboration with the choreographers, even had to invent a new type of martial art. The film received generally mixed reviews. Castle also appeared as the managing director of the IMF in the South Korean drama Default, and as James Bond on the popular Brazilian YouTube channel Porte dos Fundos. In the actor's personal life, everything was also wonderful. Vincent always said that he would like to become a father of many children. I'm very much in love, and sure, we are going to make babies. Few people believed that Tina would give up her career for this, but everyone was wrong. Eight months after the wedding, in April 2019, Tina gave birth to a girl, whom her parents named Amazoni. The couple was happy, and they were not shy about showing their feelings. In 2019, the actor took part in the film The Specials, a dramatic comedy about volunteering, and the next year was also quite successful for the actor. In January, it was the premiere of the science fiction film Underwater. Vincent starred in it along with Kristen Stewart. The plot revolved around adventures in space. Also in the spring of 2020, it was the premiere of the third season of the TV series Westworld, in which Vincent played the role of Ingeron Serac, the creator and keeper of the strategic planning artificial intelligence system. Vincent Castle remains one of the most famous French actors who are in unprecedented demand both at home and abroad. In 2021, he played Julius Caesar in the new film adaptation of Asterix and Obelix, The Middle Kingdom. The premiere of the film took place in February 2023. Tabascos. Tabascos. Le grec, là? <laughs> Besides, he got the role of Athos in the new film trilogy, The Three Musketeers. Furthermore, Vincent starred in the Apple TV miniseries Liaison, directed by Stephen Hopkins. It's interesting that he became one of the first actors contacted by a well-known company even before the director was chosen. But the project became not only Castle's acting job, the actor also realized himself as an executive producer. So uh, it was a way for me to keep a little bit of latitude creatively. And, uh, and not to be a victim of choices of cast and, and directors uh, that could have been made without my uh, approval or, uh, you know, things like that. On July 31st, 2021, Vincent publicly congratulated his beloved wife on the sixth anniversary of their relationship. And on August 24th of the same year, the spectacular couple celebrated their third wedding anniversary. Their family life was very harmonious. Both learned to combine work and personal life, devoted maximum time to their little daughter, and did not forget about each other. However, many people did not stop comparing Konenki and Bellucci. The former and current wife of the actor are indeed similar in many ways, especially if the young model straightens her hair. The public did not give up and criticized the French actor for trying to look younger at the expense of his spouse. Vincent had only one answer to this. Yes, he's already over 50, and that is why he does what he wants regardless of what others think. He has one life. He once said the same thing to his mother. Approaching old age is a strange thing, mother. Suddenly you start to understand which things you really like and which you don't, and you don't have time to pretend. However, even at that time, there were rumors that everything was not so harmonious in the couple's relationship. Tina often appeared at parties alone or spent time in the company of her brother and friends. While young Kuneki was still partying and dancing till the break of dawn, Vincent liked quiet family evenings. 
At the same time, there were no clear signs that anything was wrong in their family life. Tina was friends and communicated closely with Vincent's eldest daughter, Deva. The couple periodically appeared in public together, showing that everything was fine. And suddenly, like thunder in the middle of a clear sky, the news flashed. Vincent Castle and Tina Kaneki are divorcing. Moreover, it was Castle who allegedly initiated the divorce. He was the first to delete all the photos of his beloved from social networks and did not congratulate her on her birthday on April 5th when she turned 26. For Tina, it appeared to be an unpleasant surprise. According to insiders, she was simply overwhelmed with grief, and her heart was broken. Shortly before the news of the divorce flew around the world, Tina visited a match of Paris football club with her husband, again. On the podium, the model looked sad and alienated. Officially, neither the couple nor their representatives commented on the breakup itself or its reasons, but rumors are already spreading on the internet that Tina could have cheated on Castle, and he, of course, did not forgive it. Others tend to think that the actor has found someone younger. What do you think really happened to the star couple? Write to us in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. There are still so many interesting things ahead you will not believe. Besides shooting in movies, Castle does not shy away from advertising projects. This year, he appeared in a strict suit, becoming the face of the new Prada advertising campaign. The actor admitted that he would not mind becoming a father one more time, the fourth time, if the woman with him would be willing to do so. It's women who decide when to give birth to children. It may be wishful thinking for me, but for us men, it's easier. For a woman, it's really a choice to get pregnant. The actor says, His daughters occupy a significant place in his life, and now he understands how important it is to devote a lot of time to them. I'm very present. I try to make the moments we spend together happy. Fun, you know? Celebrate life every day, Vincent said. One of the things I realized very quickly is that the moment when a person is formed, say from birth to 13, 14, 15 years old, is extremely important because it creates memories that will last forever. After that, it's too late. In communication, the actor is lively, active, talkative. Does he feel a respectable age? Of course, says the actor. But I always think of what my father used to tell me, and it used to make me laugh a lot. If you wake up at 50 and there's no pain anywhere, you're dead. I have pains, so I can say that I am very alive. Castle is an ambiguous person and actor. His fiery nature in reality often creates problems for him, but on the screen it allows him to fully transform into his character. He can be loved and hated, but he certainly does not leave the viewer indifferent. He perfectly plays a scumbag on screen, but in real life he can be a gentle and loving father. By the way, you can learn more about Vincent's eldest daughter if you click on the video that appeared on your screen. There we told what famous children of famous people do. Follow the link and watch, and don't forget to like this video. That's all for today. It was the Biographer Channel. See you very soon.